The police have continued their siege on the Abuja residence of Senator Dino Malai. Some of the police operators told our correspondent that the senator allegedly shouted at policemen from a window on the top floor of the building, thus confirming his presence in the house. Based on this, the police say they will remain around the house until the senator comes out of the building. Our correspondent, Ajuri Ngalali, brings us the latest. Three of the standoff at the residence of Senator Dino Malaye and the Nigerian police are not shifting position. Amidst a crossfire of verbal salvos between political parties, government institutions, and the senator, who has not been seen publicly since the beginning of the raid, there is much intrigue and speculation. But in recent days, Channel's television has exclusively gathered new facts which offer a more complete picture. On the first day of the siege, Senator Dino Malai tells the media that he is not at the home under siege. I'm not in Abuja, but I will, I will definitely uh, show myself up when uh, I'm back, but I'm not in Abuja right now. But in our exclusive discussion with police, that account is brought into question. Pleading for an off-camera discussion, police officials allege that Senator Malai is in the house currently occupied by police and has been seen shouting at officers from the windows on the uppermost floor of the besieged compound. This incident was not witnessed by Channel's television. The intrigues do not end there. Recently, Senate President Bukola Saraki publicly stated that the allegations of attempted homicide against Senator Malai are political alleging that no invitation or notice has ever been given to the clerk of the National Assembly on this matter, and I quote, Though the police in their statement claim that there was a request to the clerk of the National Assembly, CNA, inviting Senator Malai to report to the police, my inquiry from the CNA showed that he had no such letter. If there was an offense allegedly committed in July and the police waited until now, we do not see the urgency and the need to arrest him about six weeks to the election in which he is a candidate, end quote. However, Channel's television exclusively gathered official documents which run contrary to the claim by the Senate president, as the police did indeed issue an invitation letter to the clerk dated July 23, 2018, and stamped as received by the clerk of the National Assembly the following day. Pleading anonymity, the lead investigator from the Kogi State Police Command confided in Channel's television that he personally submitted the letter to the clerk, Mohamed Sani Omolori, by hand, and I witnessed the clerk physically hand the letter over to Senator Dino Malai in person. This claim directly contradicts recent assertions from the National Assembly and Senator Dino Malai. The police say that the senator has not responded until date, which they believe necessitates his arrest. While this is the account of the police command's lead investigator, all attempts to obtain the response of the clerk of the National Assembly and the Senate president have proven abortive. This is Sergeant Danjima Saliu, the wounded police officer who was shot on July 19, 2018, by assailants who police allege had acted on the instruction of Senator to Dino Malai at a checkpoint in Kogi State. Medical records from the Federal Medical Center in Lokoja show that the 38-year-old officer received a gunshot wound to his right chest with no exit wound as the bullet remained lodged in the victim. The victim remains alive in a serious condition. Amidst the speculation, many facts are evasive. We will subsequently follow up with officials from the National Assembly to ascertain their position on these matters. Arjuri Ingilali, Channels Television News. In sports news, Super Falcons duo Asisata Shola and Onome AB say 2019 is a serious year for the reigning African women's champions as they target their first Women's World Cup crown. The nine-time African champions are drawn in Group A at football championship alongside the hosts, France, South Korea and Norway. The girls insist, although it will be a tough one, they're not going to the tournament to make the numbers when action begins on June 7th. 
Yeah, 2019 World Cup. Um, it is, uh, I would say Super Falcons that will not go to the World Cup to make up the numbers, but a team who is going there to fight and make history, obviously. And we try to give our best and make sure we don't let our supporters down. Going to the World Cup, we are not just going there to participate. We are going there to make Nigeria proud. We are going there to make our name higher by passing through the group stage and by the grace of God, when I come back with the cup, we can say. In the English Premier League, Manchester United's Paul Pogba scored twice as the Red Devils earlier this evening beat Bournemouth 4-1 at Old Trafford to maintain Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's 100% start as caretaker manager. A first half of Cavalier attacking football saw United score three times with Pogba netting his second double in successive games and Marcus Rashford grabbing the other. They're, not, they're now only three points behind fifth place Arsenal. Manchester City have bounced back from two consecutive defeats to beat Southampton 3-1 and, and cut the gap on the English Premier League leaders Liverpool to seven points before the top two meet on Thursday. Frenchman N'Golo Kante scored the only goal of the game as Chelsea beat Crystal Palace at Sellers Park in a lunchtime fixture. To tennis, world number three, Roger Federer has begun his season with a 6-1, 6-1 thrashing of Great Britain's Cameron Norrie at the Hoffman Cup in Perth. Great Britain made a winning start of the tournament on Saturday, but they were defeated by Switzerland earlier today after Federer won the opening singles rubber in just 57 minutes. The 37-year-old Swiss is warming up for the Australian Open, which he has won for the last two years. Federer also teamed up with Belinda Bencic to win the mixed doubles match in straight sets to shoot to the top of Group B. Opposition leaders in the Democratic Republic of Congo are accusing the country's electoral authorities of preventing people from casting their ballots in today's presidential election. As a third election the country has witnessed since the end of civil war in 2002, which killed at least 5 million people. Despite several postponements for this election, Sunday's vote was hit by a series of delays that frustrated many. And the main news again. President Mamadou Buhari, former president, good luck Jonathan, and vice presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Peter Albi, today paid condolence visits to the family of Nigeria's Second Republic President Al Haji Shehu Shagari in Sokoto State. Also today, the Nigeria police continued its siege on the Abuja residence of Senator Dino Melaye for a third day in an operation to arrest the lawmaker of alleged culpability in an attempted homicide. That is the news of 10 tonight. Thank you for watching. I am Amarachi Ubani. Good night.